Aisha says, when we make our morning and evening athkar, our mind wanders off and start thinking about other things. Since we are not uh, Arabs and we do not understand Arabic, does this not give us the protection against which we are reciting those duas? So basically speaking, Aisha's question is about protection awarded from supplications and vocations and adhkar said, but without concentration. And secondly, the issue of wandering while repeating or saying these adhkar, how to um, fight this, how to stop this. So firstly, the adhkar that we say, the protection is full and 100% whenever we have 100 concentration. The less the concentration is, the less the protection is. The evidence. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, invoke Allah, supplicate to Allah when you are most certain of Him answering you. Four, Allah does not respond to a heart that is wandering and not concentrating, not concentrating. So if a person is heedless and not paying attention like the so many Muslims we see every single day after the prayer is over, we see a lot of bro brothers raising their hands, making dua, looking around, saying things that they've learned since childhood not necessarily thinking of what they're saying. They're looking here and there, looking at the watches, uh, looking around in like 60 seconds or 90 seconds, and it's over. And then they go. <clears throat> Have they been concentrating? No. So will they get the protection sought after? No. Because their hearts were not present. Likewise, when you say the morning and evening athkar, if you just say it without concentrating in it, it doesn't have the right effect and impact. And this is the main reason why so many people say, Sheikh, I've always said my athkar, I've always recited my three qul, the last three chapters of the Quran, three times in, in the morning and in the evening, and once after every prayer, ayat al-kursi, but I still got black magic. I've still got jinn possession. Someone was envious. Someone gave me the evil eye. How is that possible? Well, it's possible because simply you did not do the right thing when you recited it because you did not concentrate in it. You simply said it, read it, and did not give it much thought. This is problematic. In order for you to have the best and perfect result, you have to say it with concentration. Sheikh al-Albani always criticized those Muslims who offer the athkar after salat. He said, how is it possible that people just say, subhanAllah, 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 subhanAllah in, in like from zero to 100 uh, in less than uh, three seconds? This is too quick, too fast, and one is not contemplating. While compare this to someone who says, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Sheikh, this would take like five minutes. So what? What's the rush? When you say it, with concentration, with contemplation, with tasting it and finding the benefits out of it, you definitely will have a greater impact than rather saying it from zero to 60 
in less than three seconds. Now, what to do if we are non-Arabs? So if we don't speak Arabic, we will not be able to concentrate well. Actually, I beg to differ. If you spend some time and little effort to know what these words you are saying and repeating from the Athkar, what they mean in your own language, and you understand that, once you say it in Arabic after a couple of weeks, you will find that there is a whole lot of difference, a world of difference between what you used to do and what you're doing it at the moment. So take some time, memorize it in Arabic, memorize what it means in your own native language, whether English or other than that, and then you will find out that, inshallah, you will have a different uh, uh, feeling altogether for it.